Today I'm going to talk about creatures out of Revelation chapter 9. This is as a follow-up to the chapter 8 sermon lesson that I did recently, and I'm looking forward to covering this very subject, which is very important today to understand what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Please look at the screen or turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. When I read this chapter, uh, the Lord is simply bringing back to my remembrance what I had already learned throughout the rest of Scripture. There's nothing here that is particularly puzzling if you have sound spiritual vocabulary. So that's what I'm looking forward to talking about today. And uh, I'm going to continue this by covering the purpose. Purpose is to understand the chapter want everybody to have their own understanding. I'm going to ask everyone to please pray before you read your Bibles always and ask the Lord to reveal spiritual things because of your faith in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to start out by discussing the chapter a little bit more. Then I'm going to share my personal vocabulary. And again, I'm going to emphasize that I don't expect anybody to believe a single word of what I present. Pray, have the Lord give you your own spiritual vocabulary. The reason I present this stuff is to give people uh, guidance in an outline of how I do my personal Bible study and what the Lord has taught me. And uh, building a spiritual vocabulary list is very important as a Christian. The Holy Spirit will bring back things to your remembrance, but it's nice to also document and study and have notes. Uh, it makes things a bit easier. At least that's my own personal experience. I'm going to cover creatures that are discussed in the chapter um, and their meanings uh, based on what Scripture has taught me. Then I'll give a brief conclusion based on everything that I covered today. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and talk about God's Word is spiritually discerned. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And there's other places where God talks about this. Therefore, a saved Christian can discern spiritual things with an unbroken testimony. There's a whole world of people, and I don't expect nor do I necessarily want people to understand what I understand. It's all a function of the Lord is going to reveal to the born-again believer that has the Holy Spirit in them what he will reveal. Uh, I don't think Christians should get discouraged if you can't calibrate with someone else's understanding because God's word is not for natural unsaved people unless they believe and get saved. Otherwise, it confounds a person. Then they turn to the television or the radio or the church leaders. They turn to everyone else except the Lord to get understanding of what God is trying to teach the individual. Jesus Christ tells us, you need not that any man teach you. The Holy Spirit, the comforter which he gives us, is our teacher, leads us to all truth. And then we share our spiritual gifts to edify one another as a body of believers. And that's how people can get taught if you're Christians, or even if you haven't been born again, you can hear the word of God from other believers. And uh, if you have faith, you'll get born again. Jesus Christ will seal you until the day of redemption, and you'll be able to uh, grow in your faith as a Christian. So back to the subject matter. You discern spiritual things with an unbroken testimony. If the scripture is broken, a spirit of slumber will likely be sent to even a saved person. I gave some scriptural references there. You don't want a broken scripture. Uh, I talk about the difference between the authorized version of 1611, which King James and 47 men worked on for seven years, and 
the popular KJV that's sold in the markets today, two different testimonies. To men, to natural men, subtle changes are no problem at all. But to God, it's everything. So you want to have an unbroken scripture so you can discern spiritual things, uh, turn away from the, the apologetics of the world. Unsaved people, as I mentioned, they don't have spiritual discernment. And the Church of Babylon, the Church of the World, the Roman Catholic Church right now, exploits this through their lexicons, apologetics. You know, go to the bookstore, you find Schofield Bibles, Strong's lexicons, copyrighted materials, explanations, etc., etc. If it's in place to turn a profit, uh, then it is likely going to be corrupted because God is giving great dominion to Lucifer. So what you want to do is pray about your Bible study always and trust the Lord to direct you to where you should uh, learn and study. And uh, he, will, he will teach you what he wants you to know. That's the key. God doesn't give the same spiritual gift to everyone. So uh, that's why we as believers are sharing what God has freely given to us and we freely share. God tells us, I'm going to go back to chapter 8 a little bit, that he made a covenant with Abram. Okay, at the time of the covenant, there was a smoking furnace and a burning lamp, which represented the word of God. Uh, this is back in the book of Genesis. Now, God also warns the believers, the Christians, that the devil wants to emulate him. So the devil wants to make a covenant with all the unsaved lost people on earth, which we all, that's, that's our natural state, that's how we start anyway. It's called a covenant of death, and it will emulate the covenant of Abraham that God made. Or Abram, I'm sorry, he was not yet called Abraham, my mistake. So I put some scriptural references there, like Antichrist, God asked a rhetorical questions to the Christians in Job chapter 41, verse 4. Will Antichrist make a covenant with thee? Is he going to flatter people with soft speech, soft words, tell them what they want to hear, stroke their egos, and emulate God? Because it's Antichrist. That's one of the many things we learn about the nature of Antichrist and Satan in Job chapter 41. But I also gave where Lucifer wants to emulate the Most High, be like the Most High in, in Isaiah chapter 14. And I also put some references to counterfeit, counterfeiting God in, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 13 and then Revelation chapter 8. I'm going to talk about chapter 9 very briefly here. In Revelation chapter 9, we see the punishment to the world of non-believers for failing to listen to the word of God. Lucifer corrupts the word and the church leaders. And that's very important because his strategy, as God teaches us, is many corrupt the word and he exalts mankind for their wisdom. He exalts men's wisdom and he casts doubt on God's word constantly. Yea, hath God said. So what happens when the scripture gets corrupted, the prophets of God are slain because they can no longer prophesy or teach you what God wants us to know. And as a result, you get false prophets out of these false Bibles, these corrupt scriptures in the markets today, and they kill the faith of people that otherwise maybe would have trusted in Jesus Christ. And this has prevented salvation for many. So this is a very extremely serious matter. And we cannot underestimate the importance that God places on an unbroken testimony and how God hates the corruption of his word and he tells us he's going to blot people out of the book of life for tampering even with a single bit of scripture. So we don't touch the word, we fear and tremble when we read it as born again believers. I'm going to go on and talk about spiritual vocabulary in this chapter this is my these are my own notes that i'm sharing because they help me explain what i discern in the chapter i'm not going to go through line by line and give all my explanations throughout every verse of the chapter i think it's the responsibility of the 
true born-again believers and even those that haven't received the Holy Spirit to pray and trust for guidance, ultimately from the Most High. Uh, the bottomless pit represents hell. I gave some scriptural, I gave some verses there. These are not the only verses in the Bible. I'm just giving a couple of examples in each line to document where I came up with my notes from. Uh, smoke symbolizes deception. Uh, so deception comes from hell, and a great furnace represents Babylon, the lost world of people, as well as hell. Okay, locusts are church leaders um, in any type of format that feed on ultimately corruption. Their, their job is to take the word of God, the spiritual food, out of the earth and to replace it with their own uh, famine. Uh, they, they leave everything famished so that there's hardly any food left for the believers to feed upon. They've casted doubt on God's word. And what is left when the Son of Man cometh? Will he find faith? Jesus Christ asked that very question. And the reason he asked that question is because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So Jesus Christ is asking, after the locusts have corrupted his word and almost completely taking it out of the earth, is his word even going to be found? And if so, is it going to be believed by anyone? He's asking a question to get us thinking about the realities of what is going on in the world versus what the media tells us about Christianity, the televangelists, you know, open wide, we're all saved. I've met very few saved people in my life, and I'm a pastor, and I can tell by someone from their fruits, when they talk out of their mouths, whether or not the Lord has convicted me that they're a saved person. Now, they may have a spirit of slumber, but the reality is few are saved that profess a belief in Jesus Christ. And that's not something that we in our natural states really want to hear. We want to hear good news. We don't want to hear bad news. But what we want to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he teaches us. So, I'm going to go on scorpions, heathens or serpents. Uh, it's important that we understand that because uh, the church leaders, uh, they spread their propaganda, their, they kill the faith, and, uh, and death remains from the sting of death, which is sin. People don't get saved. They don't get born again. So these false prophets and these false Bibles, they go out and uh, the sting of death is in their is in them. Uh, stars are angels, idols, or wise beings. That covers what stars are spiritually. Chariots are Bibles. Hair, covering, spirit, spiritual condition. Um, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood are corrupt scriptures. They're idols. It's no longer God's word. We've got corrupt Bibles in the markets. The merchants have sold, not truth as God says, he says, buy the truth and sell it not, but they've sold men's corrupt, uh, you know, folly would be a good way to put it. Tail is a false prophet, uh, trees are people, crown indicates wisdom, whether it's God's wisdom or man's wisdom depends on the type of crown. You could have a crown of pride, which makes you drunk, or you could have a crown of from God because you're wise because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, lions are represent either God, Jesus Christ, or Antichrist, or heathens, or sometimes even believers. Okay, but it's important that we recognize this. And then horses are also symbolic of people, usually running swiftly to mischief, usually because they're uh, running in the wrong direction. Okay, knowing that... I'm going to go ahead and just comment a little further. Uh, the locust, it says in Nahum chapter 3, the crowned are as the locust. So the wise of the earth, and it's not God's wisdom, they're as the locust. In other words, what do locusts do in a natural sense? They, they feed on the crops. They can cause famines in a natural sense. Well, who causes famines in a spiritual sense? The church leaders who... Almost 100% of every church leader I've ever known 
is using a corrupt Bible. Okay, and even if they use the King James Bible, I personally recognize the Church of Rome's apologetics coming out of virtually every single pastor's mouth that uses the KJV. Because Lucifer is relentless. He, his wisdom is, he's full of wisdom, created perfect in beauty, and we are no match for him. We can't even talk about him unless we reprove him using God's word. So it's, it's a devastating famine that we're in right now, spiritually. And it says, that, And thy captains are as the great grasshoppers which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Okay? Everybody fears the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, the light of the world. Okay? Um, and ultimately, uh, the church leaders are going to fear him tremendously if they don't get saved when they go to judgment. But that's important that we recognize what the locusts are. This is an AV 1611 discernment. This is not what we watch on TV or hear on the radios or in the church, uh, in the churches today. Okay, the crown represents righteousness and wisdom. It's either righteousness from God or men, wisdom from God or men. Your crown indicates uh, your your salvation status, and the knowledge from God. You could have a crown of pride, or you could have a crown of God's gold. Now, these crowns are as gold as they would be ministers of righteousness, but they're not. Uh, God tells us the, the devil's servants masquerade as ministers of righteousness. They probably all mean well, but they're under, they're under the power of Satan, which is why God calls them locust. Scorpions. Scorpions are heathens or serpents. Uh, it says in Luke chapter 10, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you get saved and you have the Holy Spirit in you, and the Holy Spirit teaches you out of the pure word of God, all the nonsense that you hear from prospective believers or uh, professing believers doesn't really affect you. It doesn't hurt you. Because you know the truth. You hear the voice of Jesus Christ. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and a stranger's voice they will not hear. I'm paraphrasing a little bit out of John chapter 10. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of, of sin is the law. The law has been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. It's not been done away with, but you're righteous by grace through faith under the law. If God has tried your faith, and found it to be true, and you have endured the chastening, and the sting of death has no dominion over you. So the scorpion is someone that, uh, a heathen or a serpent, that keeps people in their natural unsaved state, and their tails sting because they're false prophets in their scriptures or coming out of their mouths. Lions. Lions represent people as well. You've got uh, lion representing the Lord, lion representing the devil, lions representing people that believe in either God or the devil, heathens or Christians. It says in Job chapter 29, And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Uh, and then it says in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 16, he hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes. In Revelation chapter 9, uh, I think the lions, uh, the locusts have uh, the teeth of a lion. And what God is talking about is lions are prospective believers, but when you feed on corruption, it's kind of like biting down on chunks of gravel. Um, and what happens if you bite? like a rock, your teeth are going to get broken. And then you're going to not be able to feed and get nourished because your teeth are broken in a natural state. So the lion represents a person that's either feeding on God's word or feeding on corruption. Or the lion represents either God or the devil, depending on how it's used. But these locusts that come out of this great furnace 
the church leaders that are corrupt from Babylon, uh, they have the teeth, the teeth of lions. And the lions get uh, corruption in their teeth, and the teeth get broken. Um, and this happens in a multitude of places in Scripture, because people are getting broken teeth, feeding on corruption. So in conclusion, it says in Daniel chapter 12, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. God has a way of preserving his saints, but keeping the wicked who don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They may profess a belief, but inwardly there is ravening wolves, and they really don't love God. They may profess a love for God out of their mouths, but only God can judge inwardly whether or not somebody is a true believer. And all these wicked people, they're not going to understand what's going to happen. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 3, God tells us, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. And then the verse continues, but I wanted to leave that thought because we are up against a formidable, impossible to defeat on a natural level, uh, anointed cherub called Lucifer. And we have no power against him, but we've gained all power over him because of the Most High, because of the Lord Jesus Christ sending us the Holy Spirit so he can teach us the word so that the Holy Spirit can guard our mouths or our tongues in the time of trial so that we only confess Jesus Christ is Lord with our mouths and we don't confess a false Christ. So God tells us, if you're not saved, you're not going to understand this stuff. None of the wicked will understand. And the serpent is subtle. So all the events in the book of Revelation, they can happen without anybody really knowing what's going on unless you're saved. And that's the power of God. The ability for him to put words together that will make a natural person look for things that... You know, like in TV shows or movies, you watch like the, 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 the movies on TV where they try to document what Revelation will be like and all these natural creatures and literal locusts and all this stuff. Well, God warns that if you don't believe on him, you're not going to understand. So let him who hath ears hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. God's word is spiritually discerned. Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, says Jesus Christ. So, just because somebody says they're a Christian, doesn't necessarily mean they are a Christian. By their fruits, ye shall know them by their fruits. What comes out of the mouth defiles us, and, uh, and that's how ultimately God identifies who are his, based on the confession that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that can only be done by the Holy Spirit. I'll continue a different subject next week. Thank you guys for watching and listening. God bless everyone.